My dear friends in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, war is a terrible thing. If you've read any history at all about wars, boy, they do terrible damage. They can destroy whole societies, cultures, tear families apart. Uh, sometimes, like in our civil war that happened in this country, even families were fighting with families. Terrible things happen in war. When there's no peace, it's a terrible thing. Sometimes it happens in families too, doesn't it? Even today, oh no, it doesn't get to the point of the kind of war I was just talking about. But sometimes doesn't it feel like, well, you, you, you rub the wrong person the wrong way or you get in a little bit of a disagreement with the person around you and it just doesn't feel good. It feels like you're you know, having at least a mild disagreement if not fighting a little bit. And it's, it's just no fun. Sometimes you see things a little different than the other person sees things that feels just so uncomfortable. It, you're not at peace. The same kind of situation was happening in Ephesus. Paul comes to Ephesus, preaches about Jesus Christ. He starts in a synagogue often and also goes out to the Gentiles. So all of a sudden you have here two groups of people, the Jewish people and the Gentile people, all come to faith in Jesus Christ and then they come together to try to form one church but there's problems, disagreements, troubles. Why? Well, the Jewish people, yes, were given the promise, and yes, were to bring the promised Savior into the world, but they took that designation of being the promised chosen people and kind of used it to elevate themselves above all other Gentiles. In fact, it got so bad, Jesus even acknowledged it. Remember when he was talking to one woman from a foreign country, not a Jewish person? He wasn't saying it was right to talk this way, but he wanted to let her know, well, you understand that, well, sometimes the children eat bread and they don't want to share it with their dogs. And that's kind of the way the Jewish people looked on every other race. They looked on them as not human, literally mongrels. That happens sometimes, right? Between different cultures, different people, divisions happen. And, and because of that now, the Jewish people are coming into and believing in Jesus Christ, and the Gentiles are coming into and believing in Jesus Christ, coming into one church. Well, the one group thinks they're superior to the other group, and then the, the group that feels is told that they're inferior, they kind of resent the group, that talks about them that way. And then there's troubles, there's division, there is not peace. That's why Jesus came to bring peace. And here the Apostle Paul tells, talks with, shares with the Ephesians, well, this is how you take two different groups and make them all as one because Jesus, Jesus is our peace. Jesus is our peace. We need to take that to heart, how he destroyed the dividing wall of hostility. And in Jesus, we are a dwelling in which God lives. So what happened here in the congregation in Ephesus? When these people were brought together and they were not getting along, they were fighting with each other or maybe just resenting each other or looking down on each other. Well, the Apostle Paul kind of reminds them, you know, you all came from the same place. You all came from a group of people called sinners, for we have all sinned. I've sinned. You sinned. All these Jewish and Gentile Christians, they all sinned. And they all equally deserved God's punishment. And they all equally had one thing happen for them that was good. Jesus Christ died for each and every one of them. Just the same. I once knew a person that came here from South Africa and he, every time he saw somebody from another race, kind of always made a little negative comment. And finally one day someone talked with him and said, so did Jesus shed buckets of blood for you and only a few drops for them? Think about that. Jesus shed his blood the same for every person on this earth. So wait, you and I should always work in our hearts to look at other people in one way. Just like ourselves, we've all sinned against God. And just like ourselves, Jesus Christ has died for every person and shed an equal amount of blood for every person on this earth. 
just like in that opening section from the Wells Connection, we need to reach out to people and let them know that God loves them just as much as he loves us because we're all saved the same way. Just before this section in Scripture, you know the verse, by grace you are saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is a gift from God. It's a gift from God that you and I believe in Jesus as our Savior, that we trust that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. And that's what the Apostle Paul points to. He says, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ was shed for every person on this earth, just the same, just as equally. And the blood of Christ is that which, well, I don't know about your life particularly, but I know about my life particularly, and I can look back in my life in the not too distant past and see that I've sinned against God. Perhaps you can see the same yourself, and some way you haven't loved God as you should, or you haven't loved your neighbor as you should. And you and I, we bring these sins to God, and God says, okay, it's going to take something to pay for this. You, you can't pay for it, and I can't pay for it, but here God tells us, I'm going to make a payment for you. I'm going to pay for your sins with the blood of my own son. And Jesus Christ himself came to this earth and shed his blood for the sins of everyone in the world. So how do you and I know that we're forgiven all those sins against failing to love God perfectly and failing to love our neighbor perfectly? Because the perfect blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin, completely, fully, to the very end, God loves you, and he demonstrates that love for you in the blood of Jesus, his own son. And now, no matter how far away you've been from God, God has brought you near to him through the blood of Christ. What a blessing that is to know that the blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin, that you and I now know every day of our lives that every one of our sins has been paid for, and just like we were reminded in our first lesson this morning, that the Lord himself is our righteousness. So not only has God cleansed you from every one of your sins, God has also taken the perfection, the perfect life of Jesus, and said, here, you, you get the credit for it. You and I can look to Jesus and say, he's my righteousness. He's the one that gives me a perfect standing in God's sight. What a blessing that is to know. When you and I stop and think about the blood of Jesus Christ cleansing us from all sin, we remember, for he himself is our peace. I have peace with God through Jesus. And it's through Jesus then I can be at peace with everybody around me. In fact, Scripture says, right? As far as in you lies, live at peace with all people. Now, there's some things we can't control, that which other people do, but if it's within you to do it, to live at peace with all people, because he himself is our peace, who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. All that hostility that was being felt between Jewish and Gentile, that whole wall of hostility, Jesus Christ destroyed that through his blood. And by destroying that barrier, that dividing wall of hostility, he has made the two one. He has said, Jewish, Gentile, doesn't matter what race you are, what religion. It's all in Jesus Christ that you and I have forgiveness of our sins. And having the forgiveness of our sins, we have been made one. And God wants us thus to act like one, to talk like one, to be one with each other. Hmm, how? Well, what did Jesus do? By abolishing in his flesh the law with its commandments and regulations. The, the Old Testament Jewish people were rightly given all these ceremonial laws. And there's differences between ceremonial laws, the moral laws, basically the Ten Commandments, and civil laws, how to run government. That's all in the Old Testament. And all those ceremonial laws were all pointing to one sacrifice, the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made on the cross. An interesting thing happened when Jesus Christ died. It says that in the temple, the curtain was torn in two. That means that access to the Holy of Holies was given to all people through the blood of Jesus. And all those Old Testament ceremonial laws were no longer needed at all. They had served their purpose. That's what it means here, that in his flesh he abolished the law with its commandments and regulations. 
Those things were all gone now, so there was no reason for the Jewish people to separate themselves any longer, that they were now all one. You and I, too, we want to act together as one, that we work together as one. Uh, with all the, all the divisions that have been caused in the past year or two with everything that has gone on, it's, it's draining, it's terrible, and how is this going to get all changed? It, it feels like sometimes even walls have been built, and I didn't even build them at all. Well, how does this get fixed? It's the same answer, for he himself is our peace. He's the one that makes us one with other people. He's the one that forgives sins where sins need to be forgiven. He's the one that provides love where love needs to happen. I remember talking with one young lady I, I met in, in the city of Milwaukee once, and to this day, I honestly don't know how I upset her. I, I don't know. If I knew, I would have taken care of that in some way, but she was just as upset with me as possible. Maybe she just had a bad day, and... She talked with me in the most disrespectful way that I have ever heard in my life. I, I honestly could not repeat one word that she said, not only in society, but especially not here in church. And, and as she just, just ranted and raved and was just the terrible language as you can possibly imagine, you know, I had a couple choices then. I could respond back with the same kind of language. Well, that certainly wouldn't be creating peace between me and her. I could just walk away, but again, that probably wouldn't help her out. And finally, I was just led by God's Spirit to say, you know, if you don't treat other people respectfully, that just means you don't respect yourself. And she stopped. She didn't know how to answer that. And you give thanks that God gives you words like that to say, but sometimes that's what it takes to bring peace in a situation. It's hard to do, especially when people are upset and angry and in your face and all. God help me bring peace in this situation and it's really ultimately God's Holy Spirit that does that work in our hearts and in our minds to wipe out, destroy barriers, to stop these dividing walls of hostility that are getting raised. We, we need to keep working on that, to keep trying to understand people the best that we can, to find out exactly, well, okay, this is, this is what I need to change personally. And then to, to look also and see, well, uh, this is where I can't change it all, because this is, this is what God's Word says, that I can't change it all, and still just to peacefully hold to that. And to most of all hold that, well, the blood of Jesus it cleanses me of my sins today, those sins which I deserve eternal death for. He's given me forgiveness, and that same Jesus died for every other person on this world, and how, how can I bring that peace to that person? It's not easy. But Jesus said our life in this world would never be easy. But it's the work that God has called us to do, to bring peace in hostile, warring, Maybe it's just a little bit disgruntled. Whatever the situation, God wants us to bring peace. And Jesus is that peace we can bring to others. His purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two, thus making peace. And in this one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. So there's hostile things going on, not only between people groups, but sometimes between all people and God. That, well, there's these things for which we've done wrong against God, and God is rightly angry with us, and there's just all this hostility that happens because of sin. And what has God done? God just says, okay, I'm not going to count any of your sins against you. I'm going to count all of your sins against Jesus. And there on the cross, Jesus paid for every one of our sins. So now God counted all of our sins against Jesus. Oh, isn't that a blessing to know that anything you're feeling guilty for, any sin that you've ever done, it's all been reconciled? Not counted against you, but God went and counted it against Jesus so that he could bring peace to your life. You and I are at peace with God, and it's that peace that you and I share with each other. He has taken us and made one new man out of the two. God has put us together with him by reconciling us to himself, and God has put us together with each other. You and I as sinners, we are all forgiven saints, 
And as saints of God, God has put us all together and made us one. One people, one nation, one joint, one man. One new man out of the two, thus making peace. God wants there to be peace. Maybe it's just peace with the person in the pew next to you. Maybe it's peace with the person who's in the front row or back row behind you. Maybe it's just peace with your neighbor. Maybe it's just peace with somebody you don't even know. But God is the one through Jesus Christ to bring peace to our lives. And it's just a whole lot more fun living in peace than to live in hostility with people. That all happens through the death of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Jesus came and preached peace to you who were far away, the Gentile people, and peace to those who were near, the Jewish people with the misunderstandings that they had. Jesus came and preached peace to everyone, for through him we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. You and I, we all have one God. The same God made all people on this earth. God is the creator of all. And because God has created each one of us, you and I, we, we seek a relationship with God. We want to be together with God. We want to know God and walk with him. And God has said that in heaven, that's exactly what's going to happen. You, you will be his people and he will be your God and he will walk with you. And he will make sure that there's no more pain or sorrow or death or mourning or crying in your life. It'll all be taken away. God has given you the opportunity to walk with him, to be with him. And that has all happened through Jesus who has created peace between God the Father and us. That's why you and I have access to God the Father. That's why you and I can stop and pray, well, God, I'm just not quite getting along with this person. God, help me to live at peace with that person. And what can I do to bring peace to this situation? And how can I maintain the peace that you give us through confessing sins, and then forgiving each other. Just like you pray in the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our sins. God, forgive me, I've sinned against you. Forgive us our sins as, oh, that means that other person in my life, this other person I run across on the street, this other person wherever. Forgive us our sins as I'm supposed to be as forgiving as God is. As we forgive those who sin against us. To be forgiving. That's what brings peace. That's what brings peace, to have that peace that Jesus Christ proclaimed, that you and I proclaim in our lives when we just simply forgive other people. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens. That's kind of what the Gentiles felt like. They were kind of pushed out. You're no longer foreigners and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with God's people. Jewish people, Gentile people, all together didn't matter anymore. It's all one people, God's people, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household. You're all one, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. It often happens that, well, when something is not at peace because somebody's off base. Somebody's not lining themselves up with the cornerstone. And even though modern technology and engineers do things a little differently, it still all starts with the same idea of a cornerstone. This is the thing that we're going to base our life off of. This is where things are going to start. Just like a building can be built that, always, that, that way, so it's all square and perfect and in right shape. Here, Jesus Christ is the cornerstone of our church and our lives. And we got to not me trying to get Jesus to line up with me. I need to get lined up with Jesus, with Jesus Christ himself as the chief cornerstone because the farther away I get from Jesus, the, the more I'm not building on that cornerstone, the, the more of a life just gets to be a mess. But then I got to look back and say, oh, Jesus, well, Jesus, that's how I should be lining up my life and these are the things I should be doing because I want to be bring, bringing peace to people and not trouble. Uh, and that's where... I mean, I need to keep reading God's word. That's what the foundation of the apostles and prophets is. As you and I take some time every day, just think about what God says to you. And, and the more you think about what God says to you, the more at peace you are with him and the more you're at peace with the people who are around you also. I, I don't know how you do that. Do you take the meditations that we share with people? Do you have that coming to your house? Maybe if you just got a smartphone, you can take that out and there's a wells.net. You can go to that and get an app. And I, I just sit and listen to it, to it every morning. 
And it, just, it can read me the devotion. I don't even have to read it at all. But in some way, find a way to bring God's word into your life so you keep, you keep building your life on the foundation that God has given you, the foundation of the apostles and prophets, so that you keep your focus on lining up with Christ Jesus so you remember that, well, you and I were all members of the same household, God's household, and that we are all the same people, that we are all God's people. That's the important thing. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. You ever thought about that? You and I, God's built his temple in our hearts and in our lives and in our souls, and he wants to build us all together so that we become a holy temple in the Lord, and in him you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. That's an awesome thing, that you and I, as we become God's people, each one of us believing in Jesus, together we believe in Jesus, and that we are one dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. That means you belong. You belong to God, and you belong to God through the work of his Holy Spirit in you. That Holy Spirit just works in me too and works in you. And yeah, it leads me to see every day that I've sinned against God. And yeah, every day he comes along and says, those sins are forgiven through the blood of Jesus. And yes, because of Jesus, you're going to have life eternal. The more you and I meditate on this, especially if I get in a situation where it's just uncomfortable maybe, or maybe I've had a disagreement, or maybe I've gotten a little disgruntled, or maybe I'm even a little upset, or maybe to the point of being angry and wanting to say something bad, or maybe just being outright at war with a person, I need to learn how to bring peace. First of all, I need God to work that peace in my own heart as I see my sins against God and he's forgiven me. And then I need to see how can that peace be brought to the people that are around me to bring peace to everybody. And finally, ultimately, we see Jesus is our peace. Jesus brings peace to our own lives. Jesus gives us the peace that we have eternal life and the forgiveness of sins. And Jesus wants to bring that peace through you to everybody around you. Jesus, he brings peace and is our peace. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which goes beyond all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen.